For more debates, updates and bonus content, sign up at thebigconversation.show. Is that something that interests you, Sabina, these these deeper questions? I mean, there's there is a sort of boundary point at which you can come to conclusions scientifically. Um, do you feel compelled in any way to go beyond that and to start asking those deeper philosophical questions about why there is a universe, whether the laws of nature are ultimately everything that exists or actually whether they, they too need an explanation and so on? If you ask me personally, no, it's just not what I want to do with my life. It doesn't interest me very much. <laughs> uh, my my shtick is more to try to... <laughs> tell physicists when they cross the border uh, from science to philosophy or religion. And, uh, you know, if, if Luke says um, that's, that's not a scientific question, it's a philosophical question, it still, it still wants an answer. Um, these questions should be asked. Um, people should try to answer them, maybe by using different modes of explanation. That's all fine with me. Uh, I just don't want this to be conflated with scientific explanations because I'm very concerned, and that's what my whole book is about, um, that um, this leads scientists into a dead end, basically, where uh, they're trying to solve problems that don't exist. And that's pretty much what has happened uh, in particle physics. I mean, you, just just elaborate on that just a little bit, Sabina, because your book, uh, as I mentioned, it's called Lost in Math. How beauty leads physics astray. You think that there's been too much of an emphasis on this idea of finding the beautiful solution, uh, you know, the the something that looks wonderful. Um, you think physics is just more messy than that, and and are too many physics physicists being led astray into a kind of metaphysical kind of sense of there has to be some uh, underlying structure, uh, you know, that goes beyond just the physics of the universe. Well, the problem is that. They are making metaphysical arguments, but don't know it. They're not, they're not aware of what, what they're doing. So they're confusing the science, uh, with the philosophy. Um, so in particle physics, and you, you, you will notice this if you read the book, because I've interviewed quite a few people. Um, they think these are just mathematical arguments, uh, and they don't realize that there's actually quite a bit of <laughs> metaphysics behind uh, believing that this is something that even requires an explanation. And at least for particle physics, it h- has not worked. It just hasn't worked. Uh, they, they've tried to use these arguments over and over again. And it's a very similar story to the, as I said, to the fine-tuning cosmology, though with a slightly different twist uh, for exactly what you're varying over and, and, and so on. I, I don't really want to go into this. Uh, but But the... Uh, there too, the argument is basically, well, you know, there's some kind of constant that requires an explanation. And then we have come up with an explanation for that. You know, there's this new particle or uh, I don't know, new field or we, we need supersymmetry and additional symmetry unification, all that kind of uh, stuff. And these hypotheses turned out to be wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong. It's just been a dramatically unsuccessful strategy. And the point that I'm trying to get across, well, that's because you didn't ask a scientific question in the first place. And so this is why, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to stop people from asking these questions. That's all fine with me. I want them to be aware that this is not a scientific strategy. It's not a scientific methodology.